Welcome back to the Serve Safe Food Protection Manager Certification Training Program. My name is Mr. Dan Delcher, and I am a certified Serve Safe instructor with the Essex County Schools of Technology. This is Chapter 6 The Flow of Food Purchasing and Receiving. The objectives of this lecture are to identify the following, characteristics of an approved supplier, guidelines for receiving and inspecting deliveries, requirements for key drop deliveries, procedure for handling food recalls, procedures for checking the temperatures of various food items, and temperature requirements when receiving food. Patrick Packaging requirements when receiving food. Documentation required when receiving food. Government inspection stamps required when receiving food. Quality requirements when receiving food. And receiving criteria for specific food items. So what are we looking for in a supplier? We must purchase food from approved, reputable suppliers. This means that they have been inspected by the most applicable local, state, and federal law and federal inspectors. These people should be inspected annually by their local, state, and, fe and or federal regulatory authorities. These individuals should be able to provide you with documentation proving that they've been inspected. An inspection report should review these areas. How the supplier receives and stores food items. Processing. Shipping. Their cleaning and sanitizing procedures. Employee personal hygiene. Staff training. Recall program and their HACCP program or other food safety system. So, after you've chosen an approved, reputable supplier, and they have provided you with their um, food inspection report from the local regulatory authority, you can now begin to purchase and receive food items from them. So when the food, when your delivery driver um, comes to your restaurant or establishment, what kind of procedures or guidelines should you follow? Have the food delivered when staff can inspect it. It's always important that you have someone dedicated in your um in your restaurant that is responsible for receiving. Make sure they're trained to follow food safety procedures, allow them to accept, reject, and sign for deliveries, and provide staff with the tools, such as clipboards and pens, and uh, thermometers. Plan ahead for shipments. Know when your shipments are going to be co coming to ensure that your staff is there. Inspect deliveries immediately. Don't let them sit to, in the kitchen for a while and then inspect them. Inspect them as the delivery driver drops them off. So what you should do in the process of inspection, inspect the delivery truck. Go outside, go to the delivery truck, check to see if it's clean, if, it, uh, if it's cool, if it's supposed to be a refrigerated truck, look at the truck. Inspect the food items. Count quantities and spot check weights. Check for damaged, repackaging, and mishandling. Take sample temperatures of all TCS foods. Inspect and store each delivery before accepting another one. Again, food items 
Um, TCS food items should not be left out to get into the temperature danger zone. And it's important that you sample temperatures to ensure that when you're receiving the item, that it hasn't already gotten into the temperature danger zone while it was on the truck. It's also important that you do check for damage, repackaging, and mishandling. This is a common occurrence and sometimes not noticed by the people that are um, pa putting it onto pallets or putting it, um, putting it, the order together for you at the supply house. And, and some other things you should be looking for are hopefully you have an approved reputable supplier. So you should also be looking for other signs of damage, uh, not just, you know, packaging tears or broken boxes, but also be mindful of pest issues. So. Key drop deliveries. Sometimes there are situations where you might not be able to have a employee present when the supplier uh, is able to drop off the uh, delivery. A lot of times this has to do with bakeries or bread, you know, su uh, bread supply places. So if you must have a key drop delivery system, you, your supplier is given after hour access to the operation to make deliveries. The staff must inspect the deliveries upon arrival at the operation. This must be the first thing they do upon arriving. Deliveries must meet the following criteria. Come from an approved source. Place in the correct storage location to maintain the required temperature. Protected from contamination in storage. Not contaminated. And presented honestly. Um, some, in, some restaurants and stuff have key drop deliveries. Usually um, some places, have, like schools, they get their um, bread deliveries er really early in the morning, and there's usually some sort of box, wooden box that they place the uh, bread into. Um, in some restaurants, this is why you might notice that the – walk-in refrigerator is on the outside of the restaurant that's because it is being made available to this key drop delivery services receiving considerations if you are going to reject items you should separate rejected items from accepted items Tell the delivery person what is wrong with the item. Get a signed adjustment or credit slip before giving the rejected item to the delivery person. Log the incident on the invoice or receiving document. You must document, document, document any rejections. Again, this will impact rejections, if not reported, will impact your, fi your finances. It's important that you don't want to pay for damaged or re rejected food. Uh, rejected food. So it's the responsibility of the supplier to make sure that they provide a a food items that are not going to be rejected. Recalls. As many of you have seen, there are many opportunities where food is recalled, usually due to some sort of contaminant getting into the food during the processing, uh, the processing or preparation. So, what should you do if a food you get notice from your um, approved reputable supplier about a food recall? You should identify the recalled food items. Remove the item from inventory. Store the item separately. Label the item to prevent it from being placed back in inventory. Inform staff not to use the product. And refer to the vendor's notification 
or recall notice for what to do with the item. In some situations, they may, the recall notice may indicate that it needs to be returned to your approved reputable supplier. A lot of the times, it's usually notified that you should throw the product out. But always make sure that you review the vendor's notification. Checking temperatures. Checking the temperature of meat, poultry, and fish, you should insert the thermometer stem or probe into the thickest part of the food, usually the center. Again, we recommend that you have designated um, temperature probes or temperature sensors or thermometers that will be used for specifically just for receiving. If you're checking the temperature of a vacuum packed or um, vacuum packed food or sous vide food or map food, you should insert the thermometer stem or probe between two packages. You do not have to pierce the packaging. As an alternative, fold packaging around the thermometer stem or probe. So again, if it's vacuum packed or in a plastic, uh, some sort of container that you can't actually like get to the food item um, because it will damage the, the storage packaging, you know, just take two items and sandwich the probe tip um, between the two. Checking the temperature of other packaged foods. Open the package and insert the thermometer stem or probe into the food. So what are some temperature requirements for TCS foods? Well, all cold TCS foods should be received at 41 degrees Fahrenheit, 5 degrees Celsius, or lower, unless otherwise specified. Live shellfish, oysters, mussels, clams, and scallops may be received at an air temperature of 45 degrees Fahrenheit, 7 degrees Celsius, and an internal temperature no greater than 5 degrees, uh, 50 degrees Fahrenheit. Once received, the shellfish must be cooled to 41 degrees Fahrenheit, 5 degrees Celsius or lower in four hours. Shuck shellfish must be received at 45 degrees Fahrenheit or lower. Cool the shellfish to 41 degrees Fahrenheit, 5 degrees uh, Celsius or lower in four hours. Shellfish may, some of you may be wondering, um, Mr. Delcher, why is shellfish, 45 is technically into the temperature danger zone? Well, because live shellfish or shellfish are alive, this is why they can be received at a higher temperature of 45 degrees Fahrenheit or their internal temperature, like inside of the shell, is 50 degrees Fahrenheit. Again, because these food items are alive. Milk can be received at 45 degrees Fahrenheit or lower. And cool, cool the milk, but you must cool the milk to 41 degrees Fahrenheit, 5 degrees Celsius or lower in four hours. Shell eggs receive, must be received at an air temperature of 45 degrees Fahrenheit, 7 degrees Celsius or lower. And hot TCS food must be received at 135 degrees Fahrenheit, 57 degrees Celsius or higher. Most of the time, you're pro a lot of times you're probably not going to be purchasing hot TCS food from your approved reputable supplier. And we'll be talking more about hot how to receive or how to transport hot TCS food when we get uh, later on into service and catering. You might again be wondering, why does milk and shell eggs be received at a higher temperature 
that is in the temperature danger zone. Milk can be received at 45 degrees Fahrenheit because it's been pasteurized and all of the bacteria, you know, the bac harmful bacteria are already been killed off. In terms of shell legs, the, the outer covering, that shell of the egg protects the internal uh, part, allowing for um, bacteria not to enter into the egg. Temperature criteria for deliveries. Frozen food should be received frozen solid. You should reject frozen food if there's evidence of thawing and refreezing. This could be noted by fluids or water stains in case bottoms or on packaging, and ice crystals or frozen liquids on the food or packaging. These are all signs of time and temperature abuse to frozen products. What else are we looking for when we're rejecting packaged items? We want to look for tears, holes, or punctures in packaging. Cans that are sub uh, include severe dents in the seam or body, missing labels, swollen or bulging ends, and holes, leaks, and rusts. In terms of um, sealed packaging, we want to look for bloating or leaking, and broken cartons or seals. Remember, you never want to use a can that is swollen or bulging because this is a sign of uh, botulism. We should also reject anything that has a dirty and discolored packaging, leaks, dampness, or water stains like this bag of flour. Signs of pests or pest damage. Signs of tampering. Missing or incorrect labels. And expired use by or expiration dates. There are some additional requirements for other food items. There are some required documents needed for shellfish. Shellfish must be received with a shell stock identification tag. The tags indicate when and where the shellfish were harvested. You must store shellfish in their original container. Do not remove the shell stock tag until the last shellfish is used. Write the date of the last shellfish was used on the shell stock tag. Keep the shell stock tag on file for 90 days after the last shellfish was used. This is important to maintain these records because there are several, especially some of the um, big six pathogens, particularly hepatitis A, that are linked to um, shellfish. And these can, um, these diseases can um, occur almost 90 days after, uh, or the people might receive symptoms 90 days after the shellfish has been eaten. It's important that we maintain these records so that we can help regulatory, our local regulatory authority in identifying any issues relating to outbreaks with shellfish. There's also required documents for fish that will be eaten raw or partially cooked. Documentation must show the fish was correctly frozen before being received. Keep documents for 90 days from the sale of the fish. And farm raised fish must have documentation stating the fish was raised to FDA standards. Keep documents for 90 days from the sale of the fish. When you are receiving foods, you should be looking for required inspection stamps. Meat and poultry, carcass or packaging must have a USDA or State Department of Agriculture stamp, similar to these ones pictured here. 
Stamp indicates product and processing plant have met certain standards. Egg products, both liquid, frozen, and dehydrated eggs, must also have a USDA inspection mark. Grading stamps, on the other hand, are typically voluntary and paid for by processors and packers. These, stamp, these two stamps from the USDA or other state to Department of Agriculture are vital for, you, uh, for ensuring that your products are, pro, uh, are approved and reputable. What are some other things that you should be looking for when receiving food based on its quality? You want to look at its appearance. Reject food that is moldy or has an abnormal color. With That does um, note an exception for foods that should have mold. Texture. Reject meat, fish, or poultry if it is slimy, sticky, or dry. It is, has soft flesh that leaves an imprint when touched or even an odor. Reject food with an abnormal or unpleasant odor. Here are some specific criteria for, uh, for receiving different types of food products. Fresh fish. Shellfish. Crustaceans. Meat. This includes beef, lamb, and pork. Poultry. Eggs. Dairy products. Such as milk, butter, and cheese. Fresh produce, this concludes chapter six. You will now uh, have a chance to review some other videos that have been produced by the National Restaurant Association Serve Safe Division, along with a document that includes these specific uh, receiving criteria for these different specific food type items. Um, you will now also complete the Google Form chapter review and submit. Thank you.